Welcome to my YouTube channel. If you are new to this channel, please make sure that you subscribe and join the rest of the family. If you are a returning subscriber, thank you so much for coming back. I really appreciate it. Today, I am bringing you yet another HIV related topic. So, I didn't want to cover this door, okay? <laughs> Let me make it very clear. I did not want to make this video because I realized how controversial it could be and also in my attempt to bring different perspectives, um, I realized that I could potentially be contradicting myself, right? Um, but I, I still wanted to do it because all in the aim of providing a safe space and also having open, um, honest conversations. And I also wanted to bring um, a, a sort of like, not everything is black and white. There's sometimes a gray area, okay? And we just need to accept that. So to bring you context, let me share the story. I was tagged on the story on Facebook multiple times, okay? And I made a conscious decision that I'm not going to answer anyone. Up until a point, I was like, okay, it's enough. Let me share my two cents. And um, I wanted to elaborate um, on, you know, my perspective um, with this video. So this is a 34 year old lady who dated a guy in 2010. Um, and while they were dating, she heard rumors that her boyfriend um, is HIV positive, but she was not sure. She says um, she confronted him and he never confirmed. Um, but overall, she went to test for HIV and um, she tested um, HIV positive. Um, so however, they, they, they broke up in 2016 and then in 2019, she met another guy. Um, immediately, she disclosed her HIV status to this person. And um, it appears that this person started going around, you know, um, their community, disclosing um, her HIV status without her consent. Um, and then a year later, she met another guy. And because of her experience with the previous guy who went around disclosing her HIV status, um, she has not disclosed um, her HIV status um, in this relationship. Um, and she wants to basically understand how she can approach the situation because obviously it seems like a lot of time has passed um, since they first met and where the relationship is now. Um, to an extent that the guy is or, uh, already talking about the fact that um, they want um, them to get married. Um, and so she wanted to, to, to understand how she can, you know, disclose the HIV status. Is it not too late? And what kind of conversations um, can they have, um, uh, you know, with this person, with the partner? So a lot of people had a lot of views. <laughs> A lot of people had definitely a lot of views. Um, I also had my two cents, as I mentioned earlier. Um, but the more I thought about it, um, I want to approach this video from a perspective of someone who's living with HIV. Um, in this instance, this lady um, that I just um, shared um, her story. And I want to ask her a couple of questions. I don't promise that I'm going to have all the answers. More than anything else, I think it's more um, question-based so that I can leave you with something to think about. Then the other side to the coin is that I would like the person um, with whom this, this information might um, um, be shared with. Um, so in this case, um, the, 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 the guy, you know, um, in the story, I will also like to ask you a couple of questions, um, things that I would like you to think about. First things first, let me make it very clear that as per the law, um, to withhold information that you HIV positive to your partner, you can be criminally charged. Okay. Um, so the laws differ from one country to the next. I've covered the story many a times to say, um, in South Africa, we don't have HIV specific laws. The current laws in the country cater, um, to someone, um, to be criminally charged of murder, attempted murder, um, assault, rape, uh, uh, to be prosecuted, um, for exposing someone. 
um, or to some extent, even withholding information such as an HIV status um, um, from um, a partner. So for a successful conviction, um, in a case where you intentionally infect someone, in this case, you knew your HIV status and you did not tell the other person. And subsequently to that, this person might be now uh, infected with HIV. You must prove that um, the person that is HIV positive, they knew their status status so for example i'm not saying this is the case i'm making an example of this lady um she knows her hiv status and she went into the relationship knowing that she was hiv positive that's the first thing that um the other person can um can prove secondly um the other person needs to prove that they did not consent into having unprotected sex. So let me make a silly example. It's very common to get to be the other way around where it's a male, you know, that's wearing the condom and, and the male takes out the condom um, during sex and ejaculates to, um, 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 to the lady. Um, and subsequently to that, they get infected with HIV. And thirdly, the other person who was HIV negative before the relationship needs to prove that here, um, go, 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 2018, uh, uh, a couple of months before I met this person, I went for an HIV test and my HIV test came out negative. And then six months later in the relationship, um, I found out that now I am HIV positive. And then, um, that could potentially um, uh, be a case where this person is criminally charged. So this is why I'm saying deliberately withholding information um, such as your HIV positive status can be used as a criminal charge um, by the other person. Okay, that's the black and white part uh, of the situation. You need to disclose, you need to disclose, you need to disclose. There's no way other way around it. Otherwise, you are going to be criminally charged. Okay? Okay. The first person that I want to address is the person that is living with HIV. The most common thing that uh, I often hear, and I've also experienced it myself, it is very hard to disclose to another person that you're HIV positive, particularly also when it comes to romantic partners because of the fear of rejection. Now, let me address um, the situation using the story that I just read. Um, she's saying she's afraid um, because she doesn't know how he's going to react. I want to turn the tables around do you actually realize that the boyfriend or the partner is in a similar situation that you were in? So what I mean about that is that your partner was 2010, the one who infected you, they may have potentially known their HIV status and intentionally withheld that information from you. And subsequently to that, they intentionally also infected you. Ne? So now how you react ne, um, to this situation, you constantly also need to be mindful in terms of maybe na ngondandigla situation, what would I have liked? I, I, I think I, I, can, I can already say or give my opinion, but now definitely you would have liked the courtesy of your previous partner if they knew their HIV status um, to tell you before you even go with the relationship further. Yeah, but so I think I'm using the, 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 the same to say, you do unto others what you would have liked to be done to you. That's the first thing I want to address. And then the other thing is that you're but nosy. You know, uh, I'm afraid of the rejection. I'm afraid of what they're going to say. I, I'm going to sound a little bit brutal, ne? Um, and perhaps come from a point of view of privilege. And I sincerely apologize for that. But I also feel like I wouldn't be doing this video justice if I was not honest. Ne? When you decide that you are now going to go back into the dating scene or you would like to, you know, a, a meet someone that you can be romantically involved in, there is a level of risk that you need to accept. And that level of risk comes with the potential rejection that you may experience at the expense of that someone um, as soon as you disclose your HIV status to them. Whether you like it or not, it's the reality. But A, they can either um, respond positively or respond negatively. You may never know. And what your experience may tell you, but um, because of what I've been through, so it is expected, but this person is also going to react the same way. But it is the risk that you need to take in that instant. 
You just have to accept it. Unless you go city ba no, I'm not going to date. Then we we we're speaking another language. But as soon as you decide, man, I want to go back into the dating scene, considering the fact that I'm HIV positive. Um, what are you know my options? And um, do I disclose earlier? Do I disclose later? Younger London, it's a risk that you need to take. You need to accept it. Another question that I often get asked is, okay, Kenzo, so when do I disclose? On the first date, and uh, uh, when we're having lunch, when we're having dinner, um, a couple of months, you know, I'm into the relationship before I have sex. Um, six months down the line, um, when they say they are now wanting to um to take the relationship to the next level, they want us to get married. It's a difficult thing to answer. There's never a, a straightforward. It doesn't matter what people say. There's never a straightforward answer. The bottom line for my side is that what are you prepared for? Okay, um, so for example, someone may say, um, if you are disclosing on the first date, um, definitely this person is going to leave, all right? Um, and the rejection is going to be there. And another person may say, actually, that's much better because then um, I don't have the, the, the baggage, you know, um, of withholding such information for a longer period of time. And then another person may say, ah, ah, not too soon, Galoko, because uh, I don't know this person. So I need to wait some time to get to learn them and all of that. So I'll do it much later when I see, okay, this is a really nice person. I would like to get them, no um, I would like to know them better and all of that. Um, still, there's pros and cons with that as well. Um, the advantage of that is that you already know this person. You already know what they like. You already know their perspective on different things. Um, you, you, you already have some kind of institutional knowledge in terms of who this person is. But also at the same time, you, you need to be prepared um, on the kind of questions this person is going to ask naturally. Yeah, what? This person might ask, okay, so why didn't you tell me um, sooner. So you basically didn't trust me when. Eh? Eh, so often and detain with this information, how do we move forward? How do I know that there, there's nothing else that you're hiding from me? Yo, guys, such difficult conversations. Okay, what would have happened if, let's say, we're having sex um, and then eh, the, the condom broke? So, you HIV positive. Yeah, how tricky it is. So it's those things where oh, oh, prepared for no. That's why my husband continuously says you need to have the conversation with yourself and understand that okay, this is um how far I'm willing to go. If when I, I don't think him now personally, I will be able to to withstand that. Yeah, so it's those things that you need to consider. And the last thing I'm going to say to a person that's living with HIV and is considering um, or is afraid um, to disclose their HIV status to their partner is, um, I hear this a lot. I hear this a lot on social media. Um, people often say, um, people living with HIV do not owe you their disclosure. I agree with that status. Um, however, I agree with that status up until a certain point. Um, so when we're saying um, um, people living with HIV um, do not owe you any disclosure, what we mean about that is that we do not have to carry the responsibility of a relationship on our own. It doesn't go like that. Everyone is responsible for their own life and being able to put measures in place to protect themselves. I hope I'm very clear with it regarding that. This does not entirely fall on the person that is living with HIV. However, I also want to highlight a, a slight danger in this statement because it is sometimes also accompanied by the fact that, well, I don't know their status either. So uh, we don't know each other's statuses. But remember, you know your own status. You know your own status. So to what extent, when are you willing to take the responsibility that if anything goes wrong, if anything goes wrong, whether intentionally um, or accidentally, to what degree are you taking responsibility as someone who knew their HIV status? I'm talking to someone who's living with HIV. Those are the type of things that I would like you to think about. And now I want to speak to someone who's potentially dating someone who's HIV um, positive and them being possibly HIV negative. Do you know your status? How many sexual partners have you had? 
How do you continue protecting yourself? When last did you test? Do you expect this person to disclose immediately when they meet you? When on the first date, on the second one, before you have sex? To what extent do they tell you about their story? When they got infected and how many people they slept with afterwards? And how does the conversation go? To what extent do they share their story? Uh, like, I, I just want to understand, Bana, uh, where does the story start and where does it end? I think those are some of the conversations that you also need to think about. Um, before we can obviously claim, Bana, this person needs to tell me. How do you want to be told? What sort of conversation do you want to have? Because a lot of times, the, the one statement that always gets to me is, just have the conversation, just disclose. Ah... Uh, doesn't go like that. This is not a matter of by oh yeah, funa is up and I'm planning or do you wanna order out? No. And we need to put ourselves in that person's shoes. So Kaili Chawen, Ufuna teen a guy titana. Ufuna teen. And then the last question I'd like to ask is would you date someone who's HIV positive? Now recently I saw a post um by someone who was trying to gauge and, and trying to engage on whether the conversation around HIV in 2022 um, whether or not it's still relevant, right? Um, and he was arguing the fact that to them in his circle, um, it, it's very surprising that we continue to have such conversations because in his circle, it has become a norm um, that friends of his that are HIV positive, they've been able to normalize these conversations that it's nothing out of the ordinary. I, I want to make it this very clear. There's a level of privilege that comes with such conversations. Um, we need to consider several factors. There are factors you need to consider such as the level of education and awareness of that person, accessibility to resources, and also the social status of that person. So I'm very glad that I get to see people that have normalized these type of conversations. However, from my experience and the kind of communities that I come from, these conversations are not normalized. They are not normalized. There's Umzwandile that still does not understand what PrEP is, pre-exposure prophylaxis. The fact that you can have sex with an HIV positive person, being HIV negative, having to take a PrEP, pre-exposure prophylaxis, and you will not get infected. There are people who still don't know that. Our conversations need to make sure that they are representative of the kind of communities that we are coming from. I really need us to take ourselves out of a point of privilege when it comes to such conversations. I remember a similar post came through a while back and I, I, I know this, I remember this because it was a friend of mine who commented. Um, a, a similar question was, would you date someone who's HIV um, positive? And a lot of people jumped in the post and said, I'll be very honest, um, before I came to understand um, the relationship between Uno and Zeno school, um, I don't think I would have been ready, you know, uh, for, for that kind of relationship because I was not aware of certain things. And this is in 2022. This is not in early 2000s. So when we say is Zindobana the relevance of the HIV, considering where we're coming from, and also considering the number of uh, the level of infections of HIV infections, I'm talking about new HIV infections. The other point that I wanted to bring when it comes to um, this question is that I sometimes feel we miss an opportunity to engage because all of us want to be politically correct. So what I mean about that, um, whenever I, I, you know, I look at some of the answers, I'll say 90% of the time, guys, like people are like, yeah, I'll date someone who's HIV positive. Um, I have no issues regarding that. And I'm like, okay, obviously, there's nothing else I can engage on. Yeah, man. Um, but then it still breaks my heart that sometimes, not all of them, um, sometimes there's a certain percentage of those people um, are, are the same ones um, in our communities that go around and, and, and disclosing people's statuses without their consent. I'm like, I can go. <laughs> we'll take one thing, Apa, and then the other thing, Wanzaenye, like, Wanzan, <laughs> what are you doing? Or it's the same person that says, no, I don't mind dating someone um, who's HIV positive 
and then the same person goes on social media and makes fun of people that are losing weight makes fun of ARVs and and so many other jokes that I actually don't find funny pertaining to HIV same people anyway I don't mind but then why are you making such jokes don't you realize that people are aware or, or they see these things and now we blame them for delaying it disclosure yeah man again most of the time i actually like engaging those that say no i don't feel comfortable uh, dating someone uh, who's hiv positive because it gives me an opportunity to engage further and address some of the fears that they may have or some of the misconceptions um that they may have the fact that maybe you can't have babies um do i need to um be wearing a condom all the time for the rest of our lives um how do i protect myself um to make sure by any accidents yeah wanna um if they happen i'm still you know protected uh, i don't become infected there is so much opportunity to unlearn in those situations because abandu is just the accessibility to information or some of the things that need to be readdressed so that's why i'm not the more excited to actually engage ababantu okay go tell me sicho i respect it you don't have to change your mind you don't have to but go tell me sicho maybe kon into ofuna ongay kon diyo or sometimes i'm talking to people um whose parents um died in front of their eyes remember because the era these were not um you know available until early 2000s yeah but so abazali babo they passed away right in front of their eyes that abazboni bekla situation once again that they get involved with someone they get married and then subsequently umhlambi umuntu asweleke ababambone bhupha pamkwabo it's those psychological things that you, you need to address and engage on so masiyeke lento yoleqa um and, and rush to being politically correct um because we don't want to seem any other way because galok your actions your actions also contradict what you are saying your actions contradict what you are saying so i i am hoping i i i have left you with a couple of things to consider as someone when who may be potentially um receiving the news or someone disclosing to you what conversation would you like to have to what extent do they share information when do they share information when we are zaz bana itini status is up when last did you test ne so those are just some of the things that i would like you to to think about and i'm hoping by this video i've shared and covered so many different aspects i'm going to repeat what i said earlier um bottom line withholding information such as an hiv positive status from your partner um you could be criminally charged there are laws set in place um for people that know their status they will withhold it um and and in in some cases they intentionally infect another person you may be criminally charged that's the bottom line that does not change um however i wanted to be more human around i wanted to bring the humanness of the story i really hope that you enjoyed this video Thank you so much for joining me guys until next time bye